Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on standard scores in counseling assessment. So let's get started by answering the question, what is a standard score? Well, it's a score that has been converted to an interpretable scale from its raw value. So when we assess a client using an instrument, we get a raw score, right? So for example, if they have 50 responses and they endorse 33 of those responses, depending on how an instrument is configured, that raw score might be 33. Well, that raw score just by itself doesn't really tell us anything, but there are ways to convert that into an interpretable scale. And that interpretable scale is a standard score. And therefore the, the score would take on some meaning. The mean and the standard deviation for a standard score are set. And there are several different types of standard scores that I'll be reviewing. Each one, the mean and the standard deviation, are set in place. The normal distribution can be used when interpreting standard scores. That is an advantage of standard scores. So for example, if you have a T-score, which is a standard score of 60, you know the individual with that score has scored at one standard deviation above the mean. Therefore, using the normal distribution, you can figure out that that individual score is equal to or greater than 84% of the scores for that instrument. Different assessments can be compared to each other using standard scores. So you can take an anxiety inventory that has one system of generating a raw score and a depression inventory. And if you convert them both to a standard score, you can compare them. And there are several standard scores in use. And let's take a look at those. Here are the standard scores that I'll be reviewing in this video. Z scores, T scores, stainines, deviation IQs, the normal curve equivalent, or NCE, STEN scores, and CEEB scores. So let's start with Z scores. Now, as I said earlier, the mean and the standard deviation for each type of standard score is set. So the mean of a Z score is zero, and the standard deviation is one. So a z-score is equal to the observed score, that's x, minus the mean of the sample, which is x-bar, divided by the standard deviation. So for example, let's say we wanted to calculate the z-score for a client who has an IQ score of 130. That's the observed score. So we know in an IQ an IQ test, the mean is 100. So it would be 130 minus 100, which gives you a value of 30. And you know the standard deviation for IQ scores uh, is 15. So 30 divided by 15 is 2. So the Z would equal 2 for an IQ score of 130. Moving on to T scores. T-scores are also fairly straightforward. The mean is 50, the standard deviation is 10, and if you have the Z-score, it's easy to solve the equation for the T-score. So for example, if you had a Z-score of negative two and you wanted to convert that into T-score, it would be 10 times negative two, which is negative 20, plus 50, which is equal to 30, so your T-score for z of negative 2 would be 30. Both z scores and t scores are fairly popular uh, in terms of counseling assessment. t scores are particularly popular in terms of the output of assessments, uh, meaning when you convert the raw score of an assessment to a standard score, it's oftentimes a t score. So taking a look at a couple other types of T-score, the stainine 
and the sten. So the STE9 is short for standard 9. It is a standard score, and the value can range from 1 to 9. The mean is equal to 5, and the standard deviation is equal to 2. The STEN score is short for standard 10, and it has a range from 1 to 10 with a mean of 5.5 and a standard deviation of 2. Now, one of the main criticisms about the STE9 and STEN scores are that they don't provide a lot of detail about the performance of an individual uh, who takes an assessment that's converted into this type of standard score. Because the score is converted in such a limited number uh, of units. The STE9 score is widely used in educational settings. So looking at some other standard scores, uh, deviation IQs, uh, the Wechsler scales IQ uh, has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation, standard deviation of 15, and it is considered the standard. There are other deviation IQs which use a different standard deviation. Uh, so it's important to note that uh, deviation IQ, the standard score, is largely considered to have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Deviation IQs are widely used in intelligence testing. The normal curve equivalent has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 21.06. And this particular type of standard score uh, is, like the STE9, very popular in educational assessment. And then we have the CEEB scores. So these were originally developed by the College Entrance Examination Board, now called the Educational Testing Service. And instruments like the SAT and the GRE use the CEEB standard score, which has a range of 200 to 800, a mean of 500, and a standard deviation of 100. So the last item I want to cover is percentile rank. The first thing I want to note about percentile rank is it's not a standard score. But there is a lot of confusion regarding percentile rank, and oftentimes uh, individuals will feature percentile rank and consider it the same as a standard score when reporting results, for example. It is a useful way to conceptualize a score, but it is not a standard score. What a percentile rank does is it indicates that a test score is equal to or greater than a specified percentage of scores in its frequency distribution. So if somebody takes a particular, uh, say, test to test their skill in English, and they score at the 70th percentile. That means that their score is as high or higher than 70% of the scores that were observed, or 70% of the individuals who took the instrument. Right? Their score is higher than, than that of 70% of the individuals. What's important to recognize, though, that it's the percentage of scores in its frequency distribution. So this is uh, the percentile rank does not have equal interval measurements because inside the frequency frequency distribution, of course, it's curved, uh, like the bell curve. So it's actually an ordinal measurement level, not an equal interval measurement level. So what that means, for example, is if you're looking at a percentile rank and one individual that was assessed has a score of uh, 52, and they later on take the instrument again and they score uh, 55, and another individual has a percentile rank of 70, 
and they take the instrument again and they get a score of 73, so the 73rd percentile rank. Those units, even though it seems like it's three percentile ranks higher in each category, and it is, they're not equal. So the difference between the 52nd percentile and the 55th percentile is not the same as the difference between the 70th percentile and the 73rd percentile because of the curve of the frequency distribution. And because it is at the ordinal measurement level, summing and averaging of scores of percentile ranks is not possible. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.